a nice introduction. Um, as I was talking to Arthur uh, a few minutes ago, this is my first present presentation before the um, soft uh, audience, as well as the first presentation I'm conducting online like this. So um, if anything is not up to your standards, just bear with me and try to be understanding. But I'll try to do it the best of my abilities. So what are we going to do today? We are going to talk about JBehave, which is a framework for behavior-driven uh, development. Um, we are mainly going to focus on testing, on using um, this for testing. What kind of testing, I will say in a second. Um, I will start by saying a few words about myself, then I will say a few words about BDD, the concept itself. I'm going to um, provide a gentle introduction to the framework itself. Um, I'm going to share with you a story of me choosing the framework. I'm going to say why I chose it, um, what drew my attention to it. I'm going to talk narratives and scenarios, which are these um, sort of containers or um, titles that in, encompass the building blocks. I'm going to then proceed to discussing different kinds of steps that are actually used to build scenarios. Um, then we'll proceed to result verification, um, working with different types, um, some control statements and conditions. Then I will share with you a short live demo. This is not going to be a coding session per se because the demo is already pre-prepared, but we may actually, if time permits, um, play with it a little bit, change some stuff, see how it um, reacts to those changes. We'll see how we do um, time-wise. And then I am going to say a few words about some additional plugins and integrations, and then we will have a nice Q&A sessions if any questions or comments come to our to your mind. So please, if you have something to ask for, just write it down, wait till the end. Uh, as I said, this is my first presentation. It's a bit stressful and I want to keep my pacing and just answer any questions you might have at the very end, okay? The general uh, idea uh, about this whole thing, the whole presentation was to prepare something like assume this no BS kind of approach, uh, prepare something very practical, very to the point. So hopefully you will get something out of it. And by the end of this presentation, you will actually know how to start using JBehave and will have a good idea whether it suits your needs or not. Um, so as Arthur said, said, I'm a senior software engineer here at SoftServe. I've been employed by SoftServe by over a year now. Um, yeah, I'm a passionate Java engineer, as I believe each one of us is. Uh, I like switching fields, domains, learning new domains, learning new tech regularly, new languages, new libraries, new frameworks, whatever. Um, yeah, so what I enjoy particularly about, about the field of, uh, field of software engineering is that you can sort of grow uh, without end, right? Mm, I have over seven years of experience in general. I've worked for many companies, um, patched upon different domains like PPMN, ERP, even some space, but it was only um, about GPS and Galileo um, signal and processing it and stuff like that. Aeronautics, uh, I did a very interesting project in that regard here at SoftServe. And what I'm primarily interested in when I'm uh, after work is video games, cyber, cyberpunk and transhumanism as a philosophy, as an aesthetic, um, as a, as a sort of trend in literature and space exploration. So what's behavior-driven development? Basically, this is uh, like TDD on steroids. In TDD, 
as you probably all know, we all write tests, unit tests at first, and then um, develop some, um, thank you for noticing my t-shirt. Um, uh, and then we, we de develop our code, our features in accordance with the pre-written um, tests and uh, basically our expectations, right? To put it in a very uh, simple terms. And BTD is also like that, but the tests we write or the scenarios we write are not unit, not based on some small units, but they encompass the whole processes and features. So uh, a BDD story is basically a little bit like a user story, story which I'm going to talk about in a minute as well. Um, from what I learned, um, most or, or even all BDD frameworks are based either on features or on stories. And in the case of JBehave, this is a story-based uh, framework, um, which is a little bit different than, for example, Cucumber, which is, I think, a little bit more well-known, uh, um, a little bit more popular. But in a few seconds, I will tell you why I chose this particular framework instead of Cucumber, for example. Um, Yes, so stories are, by definition, easy to read and write uh, by anyone. And it, it is especially the case uh, with JBHay in Cucumber also, but not so much, I think. Um, yeah, and what I want to stress out at this point is that we can actually use a framework like this not only for developing applications in the BDD way, but we can only apply um, the mechanisms to um, prepare and invoke different kinds of tests. For example, E2E tests, but what kind of tests uh, in, in particular, I will also say in a few moments. So what's JBehave? This is, uh, as I said, a BDD framework, which is very simple in nature, where you write a story, right? And at first you assume the role of uh, George R. R. Martin or uh, John R. R. Tolkien, and you write a story, a very nice story. Then you map the elements of the story, of this story to um, basically methods in Java with these nice annotations. You configure the whole thing, you run them, and you get a nice report with uh, a, a given number of results, right? So this is done in order to confirm that the application you're working on actually works, that a given process or sub-process is handled um, the way you want it to. It's as simple as that. So why I chose it? Um, a few months ago, here at my current project, I was tasked with developing a way to um, start writing end-to-end -end tests. And we uh, basically work with a system that is based on microservices. And I'm primarily concerned with a single microservice. So this is a, um, well, when we say end-to-end -end testing in this particular case, we do not mean uh, testing the whole application with user interface or anything like that. It was about testing the processes handled by the in um, by the microservice that um, we develop. Um, so why I chose it? It's because of basically mostly it's because of the four reasons mentioned here on the slide. It's because of flexibility. So I wanted to do some end-to-end -end testing but I needed something that would, will not um, overburden me with functions uh, that will not, uh, by definition, uh, be used to test um, behavior in terms of interacting with web interfaces or anything like that. And I learned that JBehave is very flexible. So this is one of the reasons why I chose it. It's also very simple. 
Um, if you want to get started with it, you just go to the official site or watch a tutorial on YouTube that may take, I don't know, 15 minutes or 20 hours or 20 minutes uh, and you actually know what to do, you know, the basic things um, that you need to know of in order to get started. It's written in Java, so um, integrating it with an existing Java project is a breeze. It's, it's very, very simple, as you'll see in a moment. And also what, what is distinctive of it is it does not really require you to learn any domain specific language in the case of cucumber for example we have this um, dsl called gherkin and it's quite easy to understand but still has some quirks that needs to be learned and in the case of jbehave as you'll see stories are very very um, clear and understandable from the very first time uh, you take a look at them so at the top level, we have narratives and scenarios. Uh, a narrative is basically a title for a story. And a story is nothing else than a set of scenarios. And for a given scenario, we want to think uh, of a description like, as a as someone, I want to do something in order to achieve that. So each story can be basically described using this particular um, pattern, right? So as you can probably see, this uh, is very reminiscent of user stories. But user stories are, I think, a little bit more general than scenarios used for the purpose of running jbehave tests. Um, but basically, the, the, the general premise is the same. So um, the official definition of scenarios is that there are different sets of setups, actions, expected results under one narrative. Whereas a story is simply a collection of scenarios, as I said. And when we um, create scenarios, we can always think of positive scenarios and negative scenarios. So we can, of course, test for um, these negative scenarios where, where, for example, a user does something they should not, um, basically not do, and we're looking for exceptions uh, or some um, behavior that indicates that some kind of problem actually popped up. Um, steps are the actual building blocks of um, JBehave um, driven stories. And basically, we have only four of them, only four kinds of steps here. And the fourth one is actually a syntactic sugar, as you can see. So we have given, when, then, the three keywords that you are probably very familiar with, where you um, set up some initial conditions, uh, do something, invoke something, um, some external service or internal um, function, whatever and then you verify results. And this word, this um, particular keyword and is basically working as a substitute for any of the above. If we want, for example, to specify multiple conditions, in the initial conditions, instead of saying given something and given, some, given something, given, let's say given X, given Y, given Z, we can say given X and y and z so it's a little nicer to the eye but the the, the idea is basically um, the same as when repeating the same keyword over and over again um, a pro tip to keep in mind is that if you develop a lot and a lot of scenarios you can uh, reuse steps this is very important for large code bases where you have multiple um, processes to test and different kind of uh, workflows, but everything is based on, um, let's say, few, re relatively few um, universal building blocks, uh, steps, basically. So, um, yeah. 
So in the end, we need to verify results. And how do we go on about that? This is um, actually a very nice part because you can use any kind of setting framework you can think of. They all play nicely with uh, JBehave. Um, yeah, so this is something for you to choose from, uh, for you to choose basically. And the framework itself does not tell you how to verify your results in any way. And what is also very important, at least it was for me, that you is that you don't have to rely on the test scope. So your tests, your behavioral tests can actually uh, be part of the main scope where you have access to all of the um, all of the components, not only the ones um, associated with the test scope, which in some cases is very, very, very important. All right. Um, yeah, we will see uh, uh, an exemplary scenario in a second, but just wanted to say that whenever we have a scenario, we can, um, maybe I can show you the scenario already. Like, uh, I mean, a story. So this is a story uh, consisting of two scenarios. And as you can see, we have this, these steps uh, and we have descriptions of steps. And here in green, I have these values that are actually used for, um, they're basically being passed to methods that are mapped to these steps, right? So as you can see, there are different, um, different types and a few words about uh, the nice way of, um, the nice, nice way in which the framework handles different types. So as you can see, um, we can directly map to strings, doubles. Um, we can use the description in a story to even um, create lists of different kinds. Um, dates, you don't have to think of converting anything. You can, we can use these nice tables to pass some um, arguments in a more um let's say dynamic way and there are lots and lots of ways to um, actually handle different kinds of parameters um sorry for the for the ugliness of this slide i was supposed to take care of it right before this session but i did not have enough time but at the same time we don't want to be perfect here and i uh think that this ugly slide actually adds some character to the whole presentation. It sets it apart, I think. Um, okay. We also have some additional control statements for controlling our um, scenarios, our stories, basically, uh, and the steps. So um, this is basically like um, these control statements that we use, for example, in JUnit, where you um, perform certain actions after all of the tests are done, uh, or after a given test is being conducted, after a given test, after all of the tests, and so on and so forth. We can also set priorities, dependencies, different um, stories can depend on one each other, on, on each other, one can be run after another. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, yeah when it comes to um, actually running your stories. So um, a, a second for, for some nice uh, interaction with you. Does anybody know who this character is? Yeah, this is from Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, his name is Psychomantis. Psychomantis. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I chose him because I'm uh, here at this slide. This slide is about control, and this guy can actually control minds of other people using his uh, psychic abilities. Nice that some people know him. All right. Um, so without further ado, let's proceed to the demo project. If you want to play with it, here's the link. Uh, there's actually a typo in the link. I mean, the link is valid, but the the, the way I named the repository um, 
was was a mistake on my part. You can also use a QR code. Um, I will go back to this slide once we finish with the presentation itself. All right, so here's the presentation. This is the README, the most extensive, nicest README ever written. Um, there's nothing to add, basically, nothing to look at. We all know what's it, what it's about. Um, yeah. So before we take a look at the stories one at the story once again, um, a few words about what we're going to use. As you can see, the general um, configuration is very basic. There's not a lot we need to get started. We, what we basically need to um, use as a dependency is the JBehave core, the JBehave framework itself. And this is actually optional, but nice to have some sort of um, contemporary um, asserting framework for verifying our results. And that's it. You don't need anything else to get started with JBehave. So once you uh, once you have that under control, it's I think best to start with writing a story. We have a nice one nice story um, consisting of two very simple scenarios. And as you can see, this is all very nicely colored, uh, neatly presented. And this is because I am using a well-supported plugin for the IntelliJ IDEA, uh, which is called, I, I think, um, JBehave. JBehave support. So if you have that, it's, uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier and nicer to work with the framework itself. Um, yeah, so we have two scenarios where we want to invoice client, right? This is actually um, inspired by the work I've been doing for the last few months, um, but is based on a very simplistic, let's say, implementation of different classes, different components. Um, so the first scenario is, um, as I said, very simplistic, where we have simple values. Um, everything is sort of uh, static. And the other one is very um, similar, but it actually makes use of a table parameters. And I will, uh, I think, you can tell the difference, but if you if you can't, we'll get back to it. Uh, at first, let's start with the first scenario, or maybe before that, I will I will show you how it is run basically. So uh, we are going to run it using our main scope. So all we need um, for an entry point is the main class and the main method, and basic configuration that reads the stories and basically runs them, right? So this is uh, nothing to write home about. This is pretty basic. Um, this relies on some defaults. Um, so this is not something we are go um, basically going, uh, we are not going to go deep into. Um, what's most important here is the way to look for the stories. The, the way it's set up now is that it looks inside the resources for all files that end with a story um, extension. So this is one important thing. The other is simply adding uh, to, the, to this uh, in instance steps factory. You simply need to add uh, your implementation of the story. And what is an implementation of the story? This is basically the core of the whole thing and the implementation of a story simply maps the steps to java methods is as simple as that and when you have this nice plugin installed the one i showed you jbehave uh, support i think it was it's called you can um, nicely see if everything is mapped like it should be you can just move from a, a description of a step directly into code, directly into implementation, right? So this is very neat. And if 
you make some kind of mistake where, you, where the mapping cannot be achieved. You do not need to run the whole thing to realize that something is broken. Um, you actually see it here. For example, if the description itself does not match what is in the story file, then you see there's something wrong. You have this red underlining, you know that there's a problem. All right, so as I said, this is the most, oh, this is already taken care of. Um, so this is the most important class. It uh, makes use of some, um, yeah, like simulated components. Like we have, the, this is the, the database, right? We have some domain objects like client, uh, currency, discounts, some enums, some um, services different kinds of classes and we have this nice mapping of the story itself um, so based on this we can see how everything is basically um, working in practice as i said we can rely on uh, control statements control annotations to uh, perform different kinds of um, actions either before scenarios or after scenarios before stories, after stories, however you want. Um, so here in this particular case, we are setting up some components that will allow us to um, get some business logic performed, right? And then we um, basically um, go into testing. So as you see, this is mapped to the given um, step where we um, um, when we saw where we want to establish a client which we are going to test um, basically um, we assign him a, a tier of a service and yeah that's basically it then we add a discount to the client which is mapped here um, yeah and it's it's as simple as that um, then we um, invoke the invoicing process. We use the invoicing machine for that. It's a nice little um, machine that invoices people. And then we proceed to verification of results. And in order to do that, we actually um, use two methods, which are um, annotated with then. But as you uh, may have seen, um, one is actually uh, using the then keyword and the other is simply using end. But in the end, as I said during the presentation, I uh, they are treated by the framework as if you were to use then two times. And it is also the case with the given, right? So um, yeah. You can either repeat the keywords or use this nice syntactic sugar of a keyword and. Um, yeah, so we use um, a set J for um, verification of results. Of course, we are logging over time just to make sure that everything is uh, working properly at every step. Um, yeah, we validate the results um, and simply clean up at the end. So this is the most basic scenario, right? I'll run it uh, in a moment, but before I do that, I will also uh, say a few words about the second scenario. So the second scenario basically um, makes use of all of the methods that are mapped to these steps apart from the last one. So as you can see, even though the scenario is um, a little bit different because it relies on different sets of data, it takes uh, it makes use of this nice little table down here. Um, all I had to implement when it comes to uh, map steps is only this, because this the other steps actually match what is here. 
So this is nice for when you when you have some basic scenarios and then you have want to introduce uh, ones that are a little bit more complex. You do not need to write everything from scratch. You just map to uh, what you can uh, that is already there. And when you can uh, cannot map to any of the steps, you just write then and only then you introduce a new step. And the difference between the second scenario uh, and the first is, as I said, uh, in using these um, dynamic um, arguments, right? Um, dynamic parameters. So where in this scenario, we only invoke the whole thing once, we run the whole thing once, this is actually run for two times. Why? Why two times? It's because we have two, basically two rows with um, arguments. So on the first run, it's going to use this row. It's going to set ID to this, the tier to this, and the amount to this. On the second run, it's going to um, set everything to what's um, basically here. So um, this allows you to um, run multiple scenarios uh, by specifying only a handful of uh, dynamic arguments and uh, test for many different cases without having to produce a lot of description, a lot of code. Um, it is very succinct because of that. So um, yeah, I think all that is left is to run the whole thing, basically. Um, so we can run it just like any Java application. Um, it ended with code zero. We did not get any exceptions. So all we can do is look at the, at the logs, right? Um, these are a little bit chaotic, mind you. But this is, I believe, only because we are relying on uh, the default configuration. And yeah, and this can be actually taken care of and made pretty and made more um, up to, to our standards if we want. So, um, yeah, so we, we can see actually the steps uh, in the description uh, that is um, stored in the, in the story file. We can uh, see the logs, we can see the arguments, um, the custom logs, I mean. Um, yeah, everything's here. I'm not going to uh, go too deeply into that because it's not really that um, informational and interesting, but I um, highly recommend that you actually um, get the project, start playing with it, and yeah, have fun and um, see if 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 you can use it basically. So what happens? Just to illustrate what happens if something is not um, basically not working as intended. Let's say, what can we what can we break, for example? Okay, so the way that the, the whole thing is set up now, uh, we have a, a, a domain object called currency. And currently, as things stand out, we only rely on euro. There's no way, uh, no scenario takes care of the USD. So let's say we were to break this and see if an invoice is um, basically issued in in US dollars, right? This should not pass because it's most certain, certainly written down in um, euros. Let's run the whole thing again. As, and as you can see, um, we we get an exception. We see that there's a, uh, there's a failure. One of the scenarios actually failed. Um, yeah, and this is what all we can get. If we read into the logs, we can actually see where the problem occurred. But this is not the only way in which we can verify the results because if we run uh, a lot and a lot of scenarios, 
um, it would be actually very difficult. And when, for example, multiple of them, many of them, like out of a hundred scenarios, five uh, had some problems, then looking through the logs would not really be all that nice. And that is why JBehave supports um, generated um, reports out of the box. So this is also very highly um, configurable. This is uh, what I am going to show you is based on the on the defaults. It's not as pretty as it can be, but uh, you get the picture, right? You you get how how it basically is. This is not working for some reason, no matter. Um, yeah, so as you can see, we can get all kinds of metrics dedicated to uh, our scenarios and running them. Um, yeah, you can add different ones. You can uh, change the visuals a little bit and do all kinds of stuff and verify um, the results in different ways. Um, yeah, so I think that's roughly it when it comes to the demo. As I said, I highly encourage you to take a look at it yourself, try to run it, try to play with it. Um, I did not add any kind of license file to the repository. So if you want to um, base your future unicorn startup idea on the code base, um, my code base, be, feel free to do so. I don't mind really. Um, yeah. So we were talking about the most simple um, kind of use. And actually, what if you were to want to integrate um, JBehave into a different stack or, or um, add, for example, testing for web interface behavior? You can do that. There's a number of modules and plugins that you can use. You can integrate with Spring, use a different language like Groovy, um, do all sorts of stuff. And there's also a plugin called WebRunner, oh, sorry, uh, WebRunner, which is basically uh, an extension with the Selenium uh, WebDriver, and it allows for easy integration with Selenium and um, allows you to basically test web interfaces. I believe there's also something um, to be used with mobile um, applications but I'm not 100% sure about that. So um, yeah, that is more or less everything I prepared for today. If you have any questions or comments, now is the time to share them. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Stuff. We'll need to try it. Sorry? Really interesting stuff. We'll need to try it in my project. Yeah, th thanks for saying that. I think it's very interesting and as well, the, the um, especially the simplicity of it. It's very simple yet very powerful. And yeah, you can just use it with, with a number of different tools to test things in, in a variety of ways. It's, a, it's like this very thin layer that is actually, and that you put over everything, but at the same time, even though it's thin, it's very powerful, gives you a lot of control on your test, testing procedures, let's say. I don't see any raised hands. So um, years ago, I was told uh, that- Tomasz, sorry. Yeah. Uh... Uh, so first of all, thank you for uh, presentation. Testing is really important. Uh, and uh, question, so. is, uh, question is, question uh, is, is there a way to somehow freeze uh, current day time uh, using JBehave? Because I, in Azart, I saw mm. uh, um, like a code, like, uh, uh, new current day time, new local day time plus um, yeah. plus uh, days. And, and you know, uh, it's of really course. rare, but it may happen that uh, test run, ex execution run before midnight and uh, 
section uh, then um, is run uh, after midnight. So this it's is... really rare, mm -hmm. yes, but the uh, question is, is there a way to somehow freeze uh, freeze current day time and just to rely on some fixed? So the answer is no. Bec why? Because JBehave is not concerned with the data types that we work with. So for this, you would actually need some kind of library that either uh, either a library that takes care of this for you, um, or simply develop your own solution. You know, because as I said, this is about behavior. It's not about the nitty gritties of uh, using different data types, different st data structures, and um, yeah, some internal application logic, but. Mm -hmm. It's all about the stories and, and the control over the stories. So there's not a lot of uh, tools that um, actually help you achieve the thing that you've mentioned. But there are also uh -huh. um, some, some uh, tools that, for example, let you handle, um, for example, timeouts, right? Timeouts are um, a problem that... Is, is, is very technical, but at the same time, it also has a lot to do with behavior. So you do not, for example, have to set timeouts out, uh, set timeouts for different steps um, by yourself, but you can use the framework to uh, provide a, a general uh, configuration of this aspect of um, running tests, for example. Okay, thank you for answer. So as far as I got you, uh, you mean that uh, if we want to handle current uh, or in general daytime precisely, we have to use some additional stuff and take yes. care of that. Yes, okay, that's exactly what I meant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from any of you? Yeah, so years ago, I was told that every good presentation has to have a cat, and I'm not really a cat person. I don't, I'm not too fond of cats. I have nothing against them, but just uh, more of a dog person than a cat person. But this one I like. Uh, it's called Maneki Neko. He comes from Japan, grants you fortune, and um, yeah, and uh, I, I guess. Um, fulfills wishes. So I wish you all the best. Uh, I wish you all um, happy playing with uh, JB Havey if you decide to try it out. And um, thank you once again.